In December 2016, the GASB issued an invitation to comment to gather feedback on three alternatives to the information that is now presented in governmental fund financial statements, near-term financial resources, short-term financial resources, and long-term financial resources. This is the fourth in a series of videos explaining what the invitation to comment is all about and focuses on the short-term approach. Governmental fund financial statements prepared using the short-term approach would be particularly valuable for at least three assessments. Whether a government can meet service needs and pay obligations in the next operating cycle, whether a government is keeping up with its short-term obligations, and whether a government has available resources beyond those needed to meet current year obligations. The short-term period relates to a government's operating cycle the year beyond the fiscal year covered by the financial statements. Under the short-term approach, financial resources reported as assets are cash, financial resources expected to be converted to cash in the next year, such as most receivables, and prepaid items and inventory that will be used up in the next year. Liabilities would be amounts payable at the end of the fiscal year and due within the next year. This would include not just accounts payable and accrued amounts such as interest and payroll, but also the principal on bonds and notes that is due in the next year, and a liability for pensions. If a government finances its pension benefits through a trust, the amount of the pension liability would be the cumulative difference between actuarially determined contribution requirements and actual contributions. If a government does not use a trust, the pension liability would be the amount expected to be paid in the next year. The short-term approach would not include information that is longer term in nature, such as receivables due beyond the next year, buildings, streets, and other capital assets, the portion of outstanding bonds not due in the next year, and the remainder of the pension liability. Under the short-term approach, deferred inflows and outflows would be recorded for inflows and outflows related to a future period that do not meet the definition of an asset or liability, respectively. For example, amounts collected or receivable related to property taxes levied for the following fiscal year would be recorded as deferred inflows of resources. Under the short-term approach, inflows and outflows of resources would be recorded when the underlying transaction occurs and cash is dispersed or received or due in the subsequent year. For instance, interest payments on outstanding debt would be an outflow of resources. The underlying transaction is the accruing of interest during the year, but not the repayment of principal because repayment of principal reduces an existing liability. The using up of inventory would be an outflow, but not the purchase of inventory. Outflows also would be reported related to liabilities that are recorded such as accrued interest and compensated absences payable expected to be paid in the next year. Outflows of resources also would be reported for changes in long-term balances, such as the amount of bond principal due in the next year and would be reported separately from other outflows. An inflow of resources would be recorded when a transaction occurs and cash is received during the year or due to be received in the next year. Inflows related to long-term balances, such as the proceeds of a bond issuance, would be reported separately from other inflows. The short-term approach would be an improvement over the existing information in the governmental funds for at least three reasons. It would make the financial statements more consistent and comparable by presenting all obligations that are payable and due in the next year, as well as the resources available in that period to satisfy the obligations. Secondly, it may be more useful for assessing interperiod equity, 
which is the degree to which a government raises sufficient resources to cover its costs during each period. And finally, by focusing on the next year, it may be useful for analyzing the budgetary cycle, which typically is a year. There are some challenges associated with the short-term approach. It may take users of short-term approach financial statements some time to get used to the differences from what they have seen in the past. For example, some of the short-term inflows and outflows may be related to long-term balances, which may seem out of place when the focus is on the short-term. There may be some comparability issues for governments that finance liabilities differently. Most notably, the amount reported as the short-term pension liability would differ based on whether a government funds the pension benefits by accumulating resources in a trust as opposed to a pay-as-you-go basis. There may be some difficulty understanding the reason why some current liabilities reported in the government-wide statement of net position are different from some short-term liabilities reported in the governmental funds. Because the short-term approach differs significantly from cash basis accounting, it may be necessary to present a cash flow statement for the governmental funds, which is not currently done. Lastly, short-term approach governmental fund financial statements may be more costly to prepare and audit than at present due to the inclusion of a statement of cash flows and because of the effort required to measure and audit the amounts reported for liabilities such as compensated absences, claims and judgments, and pensions. Your feedback is very important to our standard setting process. Once you've had a chance to review the invitation to comment, please give us your comments back by March 31st, 2017.